Good morning, and thanks for watching the Market Day Report. I'm Janet Adgeson. While dairy producers voice their struggles to lawmakers in a House Ag subcommittee meeting as they highlight the need for a renegotiated North American trade deal. Joining us now for an update is Alan Birga. He's with the National Milk Producers Federation. Uh, Alan, first of all, give us kind of a recap of this week's meeting and what was your main takeaway from that event? So the hearing that took place this week was the Livestock uh, Subcommittee of the House Agriculture Committee, and it was their first hearing of the year, uh, and they chose to focus on dairy, which of course is a commodity that's gotten a lot of attention for some of its recent price issues. Um, it was a very comprehensive hearing, featured everyone from you know dairy farmers from Minnesota and New York to uh, the, the, you know, the CEO of CDI, one of the largest cooperatives in the United States, talking about everything from trade to the need for implementation of the Dairy Margin Coverage Program program to some of the economic struggles that farmers are dealing with right now. Uh, you mentioned trade. Um, that was, of course, very much something that's being watched right now with the USMCA still under consideration before Congress. Alan, dairy margin uh, coverage sign up that's scheduled to get started on June 17th and USDA now has an online decision tool. Uh, what are you encouraging producers to take in from this process? Well, you have to be looking for what works best for your operation. Um, but I can tell you, and this was actually echoed in, in the hearing by uh, Sadie Frerichs, a uh, dairy farmer from Melrose, Minnesota, who was asked directly what she was signing up for. Um, and she said she's going to be doing the 950 coverage under dairy margin um, at the five-year level. Uh, this is probably the best deal overall for dairy farmers. 950 is the maximum now allowed under the Farm Bill. That's a change from the previous Farm Bill. Um, you also then with that five-year lock-in, you can get a discount on premiums. Now, we've seen some increases in dairy price forecasts just over the last few weeks. Now it's looking like prices may be a couple dollars a hundredweight better this year than last year. That's welcome news. Um, but when you take a look at the dairy margin coverage calculations that have already been put out. If you sign up at that 950 level, you basically can cover your premium from the first couple months of this year already. So to say that it was a bit of a no-brainer, and as a lot of farmers are looking at what they have for their options, they may be finding that as well. Of course, the decision tool allows everyone to individualize and customize depending on what their farm operation needs. Alan, before we wrap things up, bring us up to speed on the U.S.-Canada-Mexico uh, agreement and what relief producers stand to gain from it. Well, for dairy, of course, it's certainty, um, more certainty in the Mexico market. There are then some tariffs that have roiled that. And with Canada, you know, you're getting rid of that Class 7 system um, that was really causing, frankly, some of the aggravation that led to the renegotiation of this deal in the first place. Some additional access to the Canadian market, but what you really need is just a more level playing field going forward. That's part of why dairy is pushing for the USMCA. Of course, dairy is nationwide. You have lawmakers who are both Democrats and Republicans. It's going to take both parties to get this one across the finish line and agriculture really should be looking at whoever their lawmaker is tell them what they need to know so that they can vote to get this deal done all right alan as always thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us this morning alan birga he's with the national milk producers federation joining us from our washington dc news bureau